welcome back to Learn with Med Nuggets. In this video, we will discuss everything you need to know about vitamin B, including signs and symptoms that can be caused by different types of vitamin B deficiencies, and some mnemonics to help you easily remember them. There are eight types of vitamin B. Vitamin B1, also known as thiamine, B2, also called riboflavin, B3, niacin, B5, pantothenic acid, B6, pyridoxine, B7, biotin, B9, folic acid, and B12, cobalamin. All B vitamins help our body convert carbohydrates to glucose for energy. They also help to metabolize fats and proteins. B complex vitamins are required for a healthy skin, hair, eyes, liver, and also for good brain and nervous system functioning. Now let's move on to the causes and signs and symptoms of the different types of vitamin B deficiencies. Vitamin B1 deficiency can be caused by heavy drinking. Research over the past 30 years has identified that this might be due to inadequate nutritional intake in alcoholics and due to alcohol's effect on thiamine uptake and function. Malabsorption syndromes Diarrhea <coughs> Prolonged vomiting commonly seen in patients with anorexia <coughs> nervosa or hyperemesis gravidarum and bariatric surgery because the duodenum, which is the place at which vitamin B1 absorption takes place, is bypassed in the new root of the GI tract created by bariatric surgery. Therefore, this will lead to lack of absorption of vitamin B1. An important clinical and board exam point you must remember is that in malnourished or alcohol-dependent patients, you must always give thiamine before dextrose to prevent the patient from developing Wernicke encephalopathy. Remember, B1 before dextrose. Vitamin B1 deficiency can lead to two very important conditions called beriberi and Wernicke encephalopathy. Beriberi comes in two forms called wet beriberi and dry beriberi. Dry beriberi can lead to a symmetrical peripheral neuropathy. Wet beriberi can lead to the development of high output heart failure. An easy way to remember this is heart pumps blood, right? And blood is wet. So wet beriberi will cause heart problems. Wernicke encephalopathy presents with the classic triad of confusion, ataxia and ophthalmoplegia, at least for your board exams. In real life, all three features are only present in one-third of patients. Korsakoff syndrome is a severe and late neuropsychiatric manifestation of Wernicke encephalopathy. Korsakoff syndrome presents with personality changes, retrograde and anterograde amnesia, and confabulations. Now let's move on to vitamin B2 deficiency. Vitamin B2 is also known as riboflavin. When I was studying for my board exams, I always found it difficult to remember the names of different vitamin B types. I remembered vitamin B2 is riboflavin by the word flavin, which reminded me of flavors. Whenever I think of flavors, two flavors come to my mind. That is chocolate and vanilla. So riboflavin is two flavors and that is B2. Vitamin B2 deficiency can cause chelitis and corneal vascularization, which can be remembered by the mnemonic, the two C's of B2. Now let's move on to vitamin B3, also called niacin. Vitamin B3 deficiency can be caused by heavy drinking, Conditions associated with tryptophan deficiency, such as heart nub disease and carcinoid syndrome, as tryptophan is used by our body to synthesize niacin. Tryptophan can be converted into two different derivatives in our body. One is niacin and the other one is serotonin. 
heart nub disease is caused by decreased reabsorption of tryptophan and this tryptophan deficiency can lead to niacine deficiency. In carcinoid syndrome, there's an excessive production of serotonin and this uses up all the tryptophan that is required for the production of niacine. Therefore, carcinoid syndrome can also lead to niacine deficiency. Vitamin B6 is a cofactor that is required to produce niacine from tryptophan. Therefore, conditions causing vitamin B6 deficiency, such as the drug isoniacid, can also lead to vitamin B3 deficiency. Vitamin B3 deficiency can cause three important clinical features that can be remembered with the simple mnemonic, the three Ds of B3, which stands for diarrhea, dementia, and dermatitis. Moving on to vitamin B5, pantothenic acid. You can remember that pantothenic acid refers to vitamin B5 using the image of a pentagon as a pentagon has five sides. Pentagon, pantothenic, five sides, B5. Vitamin B5 deficiency is rare. However, a deficiency in this vitamin can cause things like adrenal insufficiency, enteritis, alopecia, and dermatitis. Vitamin B6, pyridoxine. A deficiency in vitamin B6 can be caused by drugs like isoniazid and oral contraceptives. Vitamin B6 deficiency can lead to sideroblastic anemia as B6 is a cofactor in the heme synthesis pathway that produces hemoglobin in red blood cells. Vitamin B6 deficiency can also cause peripheral neuropathy which can be irreversible sometimes. An important clinical and board exam point you must remember is that whenever you give isoniazid to treat tuberculosis, make sure to give pyridoxine as well to prevent isoniazid-induced peripheral neuropathy, which can be caused by B6 deficiency. Vitamin B7, biotin. Biotin deficiency is extremely rare. It can be caused by excessive consumption of raw egg whites as they contain a protein called avidin which can bind to biotin and prevent its absorption at the intestinal lumen. Biotin deficiency can also be caused by the prolonged use of antibiotics which can destroy gut flora that produce biotin. Biotin deficiency can lead to a bunch of signs and symptoms that you don't really have to know for your exams. Yay! Vitamin B9, folate. Vitamin B9 or folate is commonly found in things that you don't like to eat, such as leafy green vegetables and fruits. <coughs> Therefore, malnutrition is one of the most common causes of vitamin B9 deficiency. Folate deficiency can also be caused by malabsorption syndromes affecting the jejunum, such as celiac disease, tropical sprue and inflammatory bowel disease, and small bowel resection, as folate is absorbed in the jejunum. It's very important to remember for your boards that drugs such as methotrexate, phenytoin, trimethoprim and sulfonamides can also cause B9 deficiency. Vitamin B9 plays a very important role in DNA synthesis. Therefore, B9 deficiency can lead to megaloblastic anemia and maternal folate deficiency can cause neural tube defects in babies such as spina bifida and anencephaly. Now let's move to the last type of vitamin B, vitamin B12, also known as cobalamine. Vitamin B12 is found almost exclusively in animal products. Therefore, vegetarians are more susceptible to vitamin B12 deficiency. Vitamin B12 plays an important role in enzymatic reactions required for the myelination of the nervous system and the formation of red blood cells. Therefore, a deficiency in B12 can lead to megaloblastic anemia 
and a neurologic condition called subacute combined degeneration. Subacute combined degeneration is a condition that leads to symmetrical demyelination of spinal cord tracts, such as the corticospinal tracts and the dorsal columns. Therefore, patients can present with spastic paresis, impaired proprioception, loss of joint posture and sense, and vibrations. Vitamin B12 deficiency can be caused by malabsorption, malnutrition, or increased demand. Malabsorption of vitamin B12 can be caused by conditions such as pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is an autoimmune condition characterized by the absence of intrinsic factor, a protein that is crucial for the absorption of vitamin B12. Gastrectomy, as our stomach is the place that produces intrinsic factor. And by diseases involving the terminal ileum, where vitamin B12 absorption takes place, such as Crohn's disease, celiac disease, pancreatic insufficiency, resection of the ileum, and tapeworm infection. Malnutrition from strict vegan diets and anorexia nervosa can also cause B12 deficiency. Conditions that can lead to an increased demand of vitamin B12, such as pregnancy, lactation, and even leukemia, can lead to vitamin B12 deficiency. Another very important point you need to remember is that drugs such as metformin can also lead to the development of B12 deficiency. Since B12 and B9 deficiency can both present with megaloblastic anemia, you must remember how to differentiate these two conditions for your boards. Remember, B9 deficiency is not associated with neurologic symptoms like B12 deficiency. And the methylmalonic acid level is normal in B9 deficiency, unlike in B12 deficiency, where the methylmalonic acid levels are very high. The reason behind this is B12 is a cofactor that is required for the conversion of methylmalonic acid to succinyl-CoA. So a B12 deficiency can lead to high levels of methylmalonic acid. Another important point to remember is that vitamin B12 deficiency takes a long time, around years and years to develop, than a B9 deficiency, as our bodies have a very large number of vitamin B12 stores in comparison to vitamin B9. And this brings us to the end of our vitamin B video. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.